Hi everyone, it's Christina and welcome back to another Plan With Polish Land video. Today I have a requested video to share with you. About a month or so ago, I shared a video where I walked you through all of the journaling supplies that I bring with me when I travel. I will link that video on the screen and in the description box below. After I posted that video, I got a few requests to share a flip through of my travel journal. Now I use an Erin Condren bound journal for my travel journal. I think it ranges for about $20 on the Erin Condren website, but it is very high quality. I love the cover and I love the paper quality inside. So I think it is definitely worth the money. And if you would like $10 off your first Erin Condren purchase, I have a referral link in the description box below for you to use. I've decided not to flip through my personal travel journal because I do share family photos and other private information that I want to keep off the internet, but I am more than happy to do a mock spread of my travel journal and that's what I'll be sharing with you today. In my travel journal supplies video, I mentioned to you that I keep my journal very, very simple. All I do is write in a plain black pen. I stick in some photos with my Polaroid zip and I glue in things like ticket stubs, flyers, postcards, all of those paper memorabilia items. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but that is everything I do. I keep things very simple because number one, I want to encourage myself to keep journaling. And number two, I don't want to feel rushed when I'm traveling. I want to be able to get my thoughts down into the journal so that years later when I read through it, I'll be able to remember things and it'll be a lot easier for me to do that if I just simply write it out. If you are more artistic and creative and you love making junk journals or journals with a lot of pockets and embellishments, that's really great. I think those journals are very beautiful and one day perhaps I will do that as well. But for right now, I'm keeping a very simple system. Let me show it to you. I just have a spare notebook here that I did a mock entry for you for my travel journal. I made up a vacation to Disney World because I've really been wanting to go to Disney World again and I have no clue when that will happen. So I made this up completely and I have planned for a Walt Disney World family vacation. Maybe if I dream it in this video, it will happen in real life sooner rather than later. But anyway, here is what I do when I'm filling out my travel journal. At the beginning of my vacation, I will write down what the vacation is. Now, if you're not traveling, but you're having a staycation, you can do that as well. For the holidays this year, I had some family visiting and I treated that like a vacation and wrote it about it in my travel journal because we did things that I wouldn't normally do. We went to tourist destinations and I thought that would be really fun to document. So even if you're not going out, you can treat this like an adventure journal and write in it whenever you want. So that's the first thing I do. I write down the title, if you will, of the vacation or the group of entries. And then I will write the dates underneath it so I know when it's taking place. I will then do daily entries. Sometimes I will write one entry every single day, or sometimes I will write a portion of that day's entry whenever I get the chance. So for example, if I was in Disney World and we went to a character breakfast, but then I had an hour off in my room before we were going to the park, I would use that hour to write about the character breakfast because it was fresh in my mind. But I do write day one, I write the first day of the trip, and then I just write down everything that happens. So if you want, you can totally read through this. I pretended I was writing a real entry into my travel journal, but the details are definitely glossed over because this wasn't a real vacation. So I talk about waking up early to go to the airport and everything went smoothly, how I met up with my family and then we traveled to the hotel together. I mentioned which hotel we were staying at and then I said, here's a photo of the pool from my room. And then I would use my Polaroid zip and print out a photo and stick it into my journal. If you didn't know, the paper that comes with the Polaroid zip is sticky, so you can put it right into your planner or your journal, which is really great. Then I talked about how we went to Magic Kingdom and I loved it, yada, yada, yada. And then at the end, I said we watched the parade and saw the fireworks and the lights were beautiful. So then I would put in 
another photo. That is everything that I do when I keep a travel journal. I write about my day, what happens, how I felt about it, where we went, what we did, and then I stick in a picture. Or if I have a ticket stub for a show we saw, I would put that in here. If we got a brochure at a museum that we went to, I would put that in here. So when I said it was really, really simple, I meant it. Usually what I do is I put one to two photos or embellishments, if you would, per page because I don't want the pages to get too filled up with stuff and I also don't want them to become so heavy that they start falling out of my journal and I find that one to two photos works really well. One of the great things about the Polaroid Zip is that you can create collages in the app. So one time I went out to dinner and I wanted to show the appetizer my main meal, and then I took a picture of the restaurant. So I did a collage of the three photos side by side, and that was a great way that I could put three photos in my journal but not use up a ton of real estate on the page. Other than that, I don't have much to say. I really keep it simple, you guys. And so far, I have really enjoyed the travel journal experience. I don't travel all that much, probably only a couple times a year but it's definitely nice to have my memories written down in paper so that I can go back and look at them whenever I feel like it. Another great tip for you guys is to take advantage of freebies when you're traveling. Most places that you go, whether they be restaurants or attractions, they will have a free brochure. Sometimes they'll have bumper stickers or postcards that you can take for free and those are great things that you can put in your travel journal without spending any money whatsoever. I also treat my travel journal as a souvenir. I don't need to buy any tangible objects unless I really want to because these memories are more important to me than a mug or a bumper sticker. So if you're on a budget, this is a great way to take home really precious memories from your vacation. You'll get some of your photos printed out right away and down into your journal. And you can share this with your family and friends. I do let my family read it even though this is a personal journal. And I would be totally fine with my close friends browsing through it as well if they wanted to hear about my vacation. So that's another great purpose for your travel journal. Well, before I continue rambling on, I'll end the video here. I hope you found this helpful. I do feel a little bit silly filming this video because what I do is really so simple. I know I've said that word a dozen times in this video, but it's the truth. Nonetheless, I hope you found this helpful. And if you would like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you could subscribe. I post planner related videos every Tuesday and Saturday. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye.